Today I'm going to go through how I set up my GT1000 core in order to get the most out of all of its awesome features, whether it be at a gig or when I'm just playing at home. Let's go! Hello, hello, I hope you're all doing well. So I think we should all be familiar with the GT1000 core by now. As we know, it has three buttons on the front. I think, realistically, you could probably make it work. However, I don't think three buttons is going to be enough. And Boss, I reckon, kind of knew this because they've given us two options for expression pedal inputs and there's a stereo effects loop or two mono. So this is obviously my little setup just beside me here. I definitely recommend if you're going to do things this way, pop your GT1000 core here on the side because you've got your USB input here. If you're going to pop it on the inside, you're not going to be able to access that with ease. So all of my amp sounds and my cab sounds are coming from the GT1000 core and how I access everything here is by using this Morningstar MC8 MIDI controller. Now there are other MIDI controllers on the market that you can get to do pretty much the same sort of thing including the Boss ES8, ES5, those sorts of things. I just had one of these already which I got for different purposes but it's worked in quite well to be able to use it with my GT1000 core. I'm going to go through all of the settings on this one in just a moment but I'll explain why I have these other pedals on the board first. So everything here is run through the effects loop. I plug my guitar into, sometimes I have another board on the floor that I plug a whole bunch of analog and digital effects in front, I run through those into the front of the core and all of these guys here are in the effects loop because firstly I like how all of these effects sound sitting after the amp and I wanted this one to be last in the chain so that I can ha either have the stereo out or if I just want to use some headphones I can just plug in the headphones. If I've got the reverb at the end this is a stereo out and I can't use my stereo headphones and it's a pain in the bum. I've got the Boss DD200 digital delay. So the GT1000 core does have a lot of the 500 series, which is where the 200 series delays are derived from. I just like that this has a lot more option and I feel like there's a bit more flexibility from patch to patch, so I have that one in there. Before the delay, I have my Dimension C pedal. I did try it in front of the amp and it acts very much like a chorus, but I really like it when you use this in stereo and it gets kind of that spread thing that it's designed for. So I've chucked this one in the effects loop as well. So it's after the amp and it does that sort of spread, which you will hear in a minute. So then out of the delay, I'm pretty sure I go into the Terra Echo. I love this pedal. Now the Terra Echo effect is available on the 200 and in the GT1000 core, but personally I think it sounds way better in just the stomp box form, so I use that. Out of the Terra Echo, I go into my Strymon Big Sky. Now, this probably isn't necessary. There are some great reverbs here in the GT1000 core, again, derived from the 500 series, but you know, I've got one and I kind of like it. I just wanted to use it on the board. And there's a couple of effects on here that I do actually use quite frequently, which you don't get in here. So it's a big pedal for a couple of effects, but it's cool to have on there. Out of the big sky, we come across to the Black Hole Reverb from Eventide. They released this pedal, I think it was earlier this year. I've got a little demo on that one just here. It's a very unique reverb effect, this one. So I like it and I use it quite a lot. So that's on there. Then out of the black hole reverb, I'm into the effects return on the GT1000 core, which is sitting before my cab, and then everything is sent from there. Before we jump in and have a look, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and make sure you stay up to date with all of the videos. And please make a comment and let me know what it is that you would like to see in my upcoming videos. All right, so let's take a look at how this works. Now, I'm not gonna go into the ins and outs of the Morningstar controller, but this is how I use it. So this first button, it's already on that, but that's my clean channel. So this screen here on my Morningstar is my home screen. On here, I've got a clean, a crunch, dirt, Shred. This is a bass. So because I do a lot of looping, I press that one and Now on that patch, I've got a little bit of room reverb in here and I've turned the big sky off with just the press of that one button And when I go back to my clean patch, this guy comes on again So of course everything here is set up via MIDI Now you probably noticed as well when I pressed my clean button It's taken me away from the home screen I've got this set up so that each of my patches takes me to a separate page Because this button here is a tube screamer 
or the T-Scream in the GT1000 and that gives me obviously a crunch on each of the separate patches. So, th And then this button here within each patch is titled Home and every time I press that it takes me back to my home screen. Over here on my GT1000 core I've assigned these buttons to work across the board as a system function. This one here is my tuner. I didn't like this being a double press, especially because it's at the back and it was a bit of a pain to touch. So I just assigned that one to here. That is there, easy to go all the time. For the record, it is in manual mode, so I'm not cycling through any of the patches on here. This button here I've got set up as a dotted eight delay. There's a bit of an issue with the DD200 and the MIDI clock, which Boss is currently having a look at. And this button over here, I'm using as a tremolo. Dotted eight delay. Tremolo. Also, you can assign a different color to each of the buttons. Apparently this is pink and this one's white. And a blue tuner, there you go. So, let's move along. Remember this T scream here. And you can see this one here is now flashing. I've assigned that so I now know that my tube screamer is on and then it stops flashing when it's off. So these four channels are, even though it's a separate page, these are all of the same patches. I've just assigned the same button in here to the patch on the GT1000. Crunch channel. Tube screamer on. Pretty handy, yeah? Then down here, got my dirty channel. Cheap screamer on. And then over here, my shred channel. Now you can see that's turned the delay here on the DD200. So this is my shred, watch the DD200, I press the dirty channel and it turns the delay off. Pretty good. This one here, I've got this set up as a clean solo. It's more of a, basically a lead guitar that's not so pushy. So I'm back now on my dirty patch. Now this button here I've assigned to what is called the big swell and I've got that assigned up here to the big, the, yeah, the big sky. Apparently I put a delay on that as well. And then it's flashing again, so that tells me that it's on. And then when I want to press it, it takes me back to my original plate delay and it's turned the delay off. So I'm back now to my home screen. Now the Morningstar controller, it has eight buttons. Well, this one in particular has eight buttons, but it also has a second page. So if I toggle the page, this is taking me to a second lot of eight presets. Now here I've got an acoustic patch in the GT1000. <laughs> back to my dirty channel now I'm going to toggle up this one here is a second another patch that I've set up sorry that one's not a patch that's just um, a different reverb there on the Strymon this patch here is derived from one of the standard presets that came when I got the GT1000 <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Moving along, this one over here, this was another patch that I found and I've tweaked just a little bit. I really like this pad. So 
So that one is a patch. In order to change that, I do need to go back to my home screen and then press another button there. Come back up to here. I've got a few more patches. Amp vibe. <laughs> Step phaser. Come back home. So this is my dimension C. That's that one. The Terra Echo, like I said, I love this. They don't have any MIDI control, so they are on and off. This button here, I've got assigned to the DD200. Now I could cycle through, but of course there's only top five here being manual, then one, two, three, four. So I've got this set up to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buttons there. And then this is my home screen. So firstly, digital. And I've got a tape. Did that change? Yeah. A pattern delay. Shimmer delay. Man, that's cool. And the pad delay. And then when I want to turn it off, I just press it off. It's right at the front there and I can get to it. And that brings, then I take this back home. This next button, I've got it to the big sky. Now the first three here are my room, plate and hall, which correspond to my one, two and three. But the other buttons are within the different banks. So rather than going through a different bank and trying to find the right one, I've labeled them all. So I've got room, plate, hall, coral. Shimmer. This magneto thing, which is really cool. And the cloud. Pretty nice, hey? But on each of these clean, crunch and dirty channels, and actually including the solo channel, I've assigned pretty much, I think it's plate for most of them. So it just always goes back to the plate. Then this button over here on my home screen is my black hole button. So I've got a small, it's pretty small. Now I, I haven't assigned this yet to turn off the big sky. I think I might, but for the moment, I'm just gonna change it there. Medium, actually I'll turn that off. Then a bit bigger on the black hole. I've got one that's huge. And that basically just goes forever. Uh, gravity two. It's a bit weird. And gravity. And then I did assign an off button because I had this at a different spot before and I couldn't quite reach it. So I just left that as an off um, and that turns it off. Then when I'm done, back home. So that's pretty much how I've got my Morningstar controller set up with all of these pedals, but more and most importantly, how I get through all of my patches on the GT1000 core with one single press. As I said at the start, I reckon you could probably make it work where you can cycle through your patches just on here, but in that sense, you'd really need to know what it is that you're going for and have them set out in order, whereas I like to just pick and choose on the fly. So this way works a lot easier for me and it makes a lot more sense. And how, how the MIDI is working, I've got a signal being sent from the MIDI controller 
into the GT1000 core. From there, I've got a MIDI out coming to the DD200, which is gonna be sending the clock as well as the MIDI messages from here. Now, like I said, there's a bit of an issue with the MIDI clock at the moment, but it's being looked at. I also have another two MIDI outs on here, one which is going to the Big Sky, sending just the single messages, not worrying about a clock for that one. And same with the Black Hole Reverb, I've just got the MIDI messages so I can cycle through the presets and not worried about a MIDI clock. And there we go. So that's how I use my GT1000 core. It did take a little bit to set it all up, but it's definitely worth it. And everything now is a one touch press and it's easy access and it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned and I'll see you next time.